Here we are in beautiful Northeast Edmond at a very nice, large custom home that's being built. The general contractor, who is Sugar Oak Development, and the homeowner have asked us to build a stem wall level with this wall right here, going across the grade of the property out about 80 feet. The traditional way is concrete, but we've partnered with GRA Services International, Doug Reeves, to uh, use secure set to form and uh, pour the wall, which will be a much more cost-effective and efficient way of building the stem wall. As you can see behind me, we have our excavating equipment ready. Uh, we're gonna use that to dig out so we can put in our forms. We're gonna have to dig down about two feet down to the sandstone layer so we have a, a solid base to put our rebar and our forms on, and then we'll be ready to pour our secure set foam here in about a day, day and a half. We're back on the job site day two. Uh, yesterday, as we were talking about, we got everything excavated, uh, laid out, rebar put in. Today, as you can see behind me, we're laying out the formwork. We're about halfway through the formwork. Second half of the day, we'll lay in about five or six more sections, cut our final grade to the top, and then we're ready to pour the foam in. Well, here we are back at uh, day three. Yesterday we got all the excavation, everything done. Forms are set up. We've done our final cut, as you can see behind us with the forms, and we are ready to pour foam. Standing to my left is Doug Reeves, the uh, president of GRA Services International, and that's the company that's providing our foam for our project. What another wonderful opportunity to show the uniqueness and uh, different applications for secure set. In the videos that we've had in the past, we've always emphasized the spray foam. This is a slightly different um, formulation for the product. This is a, a two-component uh, two that is uh, it's a mix and pour, basically. And so what we're doing here is we are filling up this retaining wall with the foam. The unique aspects of the expanding foam is that it provides more than adequate strength um, I'll let um, Doug White uh, tell you about some of the economic aspects of it, but I'm excited because this is also, you know, always new applications, new opportunities, and when you couple the ability to do this quickly, add a labor and materials cost savings, it's, it's exciting and it's fun for all of us. Doug? At Doug White, Sugar Oaks Development. 
Uh, the reason we're here today is because Sugar Oaks development is more on the progressive side. We do everything from building houses to major renovations, which is where we met originally. Uh, what we wanted to look at here was a different way than the traditional methods of building a retaining wall. And the reason we went that direction after meeting Doug and his product was the cost. When we looked at the cost, the cost of pouring this particular wall is about $36,000. we are going to be able to do the same project for about $18,000. So economically, it makes a lot of sense. Tensile strength, all the things we've discussed, makes sense. So we're excited today to pour this, get this going, and see the outcome. So Doug, thank you, and Don, thank you for the work of the team. Thank you for having us do it. Wonderful. What a great opportunity to work together. Uh, this is going to be a fun day. Let's get to it. <laughs> Right. You're, you should use your trimming. We're burning daylight. Oh, oh. burning daylight. <laughs> <laughs> that has, that's pretty viscous. So what I do is this. When you're mixing, it's literally mixing, hand off the bucket, and then I'll get rid of the, the paddle somewhere. Yeah. We poured the first bucket, uh, so we've got about 12 cubic feet of product in there, and we poured from the corner going back, and it's come up about two feet. And so now we're getting ready to mix up the second bucket and start where we left off. And the light color is part B. We mix the part B first to put it in the bucket because it takes longer to drain, it, and you don't want to waste product. The viscosity of part A is more like water and it pours in quicker. Now it's not doing anything, but once we mix uh, the part A, it's the catalyst and we have a minimum amount of time to get it mixed before it starts to uh, have a chemical reaction and expand. Let it, let her, let her rip, Pedro Chip. And like I said, we've got part B in the bucket, catalyst part A. He's gonna start pouring in and as soon as he does, I'm gonna start mixing. All right, go ahead. That is so cool. Yeah, because even like those side cracks and next pour is just going to go. What we were talking about is where it comes up on the sides at that last cure, it has, you know, it's left a little bit of a gap, but on the next pour, those will all get filled in with the liquid and everything gets filled in. That is so cool. We're gonna start back there in the corner, or this end cap, and 
go forward. All right, we're almost done with pouring. We've got about 99% of it done. We've done 28 buckets, uh, 28 kits so far. We've got two more buckets to go to kind of cap off the top, and we'll come back tomorrow and finish it off by cutting off the excess and sealing it. Uh, and we also poured the dead man, and if you don't know what a dead man is, it's a lateral piece that's connected to the wall that runs laterally back into the dirt, which ties it off and provides strength to it. Well, we just got through pouring the last couple buckets and kind of capping everything off. Tomorrow we'll come back with the saw, cut off the cap, seal it, uh, and then the project will be done. The eventual stages of it, any part of the wall that's exposed will have stucco on it, and there'll be a rock capstone with mortar on top of it, and then the finished grade will come to the top side of that. So uh, this product worked great, as expected, very cost effective. And just to show you kind of what it looks like, uh, here it looks like it's, you know, soft, but it's uh, pretty darn hard. So we'll uh, see you next time.